Well, a new psalm for today and a new psalm to kick off the month of November. And we'll be finishing up our um, so journey through the psalms this year, this month. So thank you for your faithfulness. And I pray that this has been uh, educating for you, that you've learned something about the psalms, that it's been encouraging and equipping as well as we've gone through the year and have gone to the Psalms to find encouragement and hope and steadfastness and faithfulness and uh, just wonderful, wonderful experience this has been for me and I pray for you also going through the Psalms. Today we're in Psalm 136. Let me put that up on the screen here. Oh, by the way, did get a question about what's this little yellow box right here that's got a little turned up uh, corner. It looks like a piece of paper. What that is, I, I use a Bible software called Logos, L-O-G-O-S. I encourage you to look it up on the internet and uh, consider perhaps using it yourself if you're a Bible software user. Um, Logos allows me to make notes in the Bible. I can make notes on a word or a... Uh, verse or in this case on the whole psalm. So what I do in preparation for our in the words is to uh, make some notes about the psalm and uh, those notes are then available to me as uh, in Logos and I can click on that and it opens my note and I could uh, uh, go through that note as I go through the psalm with you. So sometimes you see me looking away, that's I'm checking my notes, and uh, that's what that is. So back to Psalm 136, I've labeled this psalm, His Love, and this is really a celebration of uh, God's love, uh, thankfulness for Him, and how that love is manifest in various ways in His uh, creation, His deliverance of Israel, His protection of the nation, providing for them and ultimately giving them victory over their enemies. That's what this psalm is about. Again, one of the longer psalms, but I'm not going to give you a, um, a outline this time. As you read through it, you'll see why. It's a fairly repetitive psalm. I think uh, it's also perhaps what they call antiphonal. So what an antiphonal song a psalm is, is it echoes, we can say. Sometimes you sing antiphonal hymns in the church where part of the church sings one verse and the other part, uh, part of the church responds with another verse. Or perhaps the male verse voices sing one part of a hymn or a praise chorus. And then the female voices respond with another uh, uh, part of the hymn or praise chorus. So that's what I think we see here is that the uh, leader of worship will say something like, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, verse one here, and the congregation will respond for his loving kindness is everlasting. And it goes on, give thanks to the God of gods for his loving kindness is everlasting. So all the way through this, we are highlighting the loving kindness of God. So let's look at verse one here. It's uh, really a call to give thanks. And the reason he gives thanks in this case anyway, is twofold uh, for he is good. Uh, that is, he is inherently good. He always does what is good. He defines what is good. Uh, God is uh, the definite, you look up good in a dictionary, he's pictures there, so to speak. Uh, God is uh, unwaveringly good. Whatever he does is good and right. He, we also praise him for his loving kindness. This is a Hebrew word behind loving kindness called, the Hebrew word is hesed here. Uh, loving kindness is a um, really straining the language, I think, to try to describe what hesed means in Hebrew, which is a, a unwavering, unchanging covenant faithfulness. Uh, God continues to love his people uh, based on his covenants with them, not on their behavior, not on their adherence, uh, but only on the fact that uh, he uh, has cho chosen to put his love on them. So the rest of the psalm then goes through recounting what God has done 
and rooting what he has done for them in his loving kindness toward them. So I think it reminds us as of the important uh, the importance to us of thankfulness in the Christian life. You know, in Romans 1, 18 through 20, one of the things that Paul points out as a um, uh, sign of an unbeliever is that they don't give thanks to God. And uh, we of all people should be the most thankful. We should have gratitude, should uh, permeate our relationship with him. And, um, you know, he is going to always be good to us and we need to always be thanking him. And we recognize that this goodness of God, this, this uh, uh, loving kindness of God uh, goes through all the history of Israel, all the history of the church in the New Testament, right down to our own day through the book of Revelation, and will culminate in Jesus' return in the establishment of his heaven, millennial kingdom. And we'll see his loving kindness demonstrated in his reign and rule up front, up close and personal. But then also when he hands that kingdom off to the Father in Revelation chapter 21 and 22, and that continues forever. And we continue to express thanks and for, uh, to God for all he does for us and all he does for us is rooted in his loving kindness. So I pray that uh, uh, one of the ways that you respond to this today is to join the psalmist, join the church, uh, join brothers and sisters who have gone so before us for so long in praising the Lord, thanking him and recognizing that his loving kindness just rolls on down through history. So be specific when you uh, praise him. Just as the psalmist here is specific, maybe take a prompt from what the psalmist is talking about, but praise him. Pick things out, specific things that you could praise him for, and ask ask for that true the grace to keep these things in your mind, to be throughout the day identifying things that you can praise God for and thank him for. And you will find that your heart is filled with thankfulness and your heart will be filled with uh, appreciation and your heart will be filled with love toward God who certainly loves you. God bless you, brothers and sisters. May you find this to be just uh, very edifying for you today.